blessings and blessings. From Byron Beach, Australia. And here, that's the good old ocean. I'm living back there uh, across the street for uh, about a month. And uh, I wanted to jump in here and talk to you about something that we all get to really take a deeper look at. And that is our scarcity mindset and where it was birthed. Now for me, and probably many of you, and I'd love for you to comment below if you, if you ever played this game or you remember it. But there was a game as a child that we used to play called Musical Chairs. And the point of this game was to win, and to win at all cost. How the game worked, for those of you who never played it, was they would have, let's say, eight children. And they would set out seven chairs. And then they would play music, and they would tell the children that there's a limited amount of chairs, and that when the music stops, you have to sit down. Now, for those of you who are already saying, well, that's healthy competition, I hear you, bro, I hear you, ma'am, and it's also pretty damaging. I love competition, but this is a whole nother level of programming. So, seven chairs and eight children and so they play the music and there's many levels to why this is so um, I would not say conducive for people to really live from an abundance place and to really honor humans so level number one is you're now looking at the other children as people to beat as objects and pawns in a game that you're playing they are no longer humans and we're not present to the journey because we're only thinking about getting that chair. The second level is somebody has to win and everyone else has to lose. It created a mindset of I need to take them out in order for me to experience abundance. And the question and the thing to really sit in is what did you really win? Is it true that some people have to be have-nots in order for everybody else to be haves? Is it true that we need a 99% in order to have a 1%? Is it possible that that type of programming and conditioning no longer serves us? And I'm not saying that it didn't serve us, but it no longer serves us. Is it possible that that type of programming and conditioning created a space where many humans believe that they have to dominate at all cost in order to experience abundance, financial abundance. Now the idea of financial freedom in itself is also bullshit in my opinion. Financial freedom is an oxymoron. Freedom does not come from finances. If I have a million in my bank right now, it won't make me freer. Anyone can take that million. The bank could collapse. There's a lot of things that could happen. So this idea of financial freedom also is obsolete. We've been living from cultural myths that no longer serve us. And so my question and comment and challenge to you is to look at where in your life are you still playing musical chairs? Where in your life are you still believing that some people have to lose in order for you to win? Where in your life are you operating from lack and limitation and scarcity and not even present to the journey because you're so focused on getting, 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 getting that there's not much giving, there's not much receiving, there's not much circulation happening because you're so focused on getting, getting, getting that you cannot have what you want but you may experience what you have. Ah, let it land. This is one of my favorite quotes that just came out of nowhere, by the way. Or did it? It didn't come out of nowhere, but uh, this idea that if I'm in want, if I'm wanting, I'm, uh, I gotta have more and I gotta get it from everyone else. According to Conversations with God, one of my favorite books, in that book he says you cannot have what you want, but you may experience what you have. So the act of wanting says to the universe, says to God, says to Jesus, says to Buddha, says to Krishna, says to whatever name is most potent for you, that it does not exist from within, right? I want, I want. And so the moment I'm, I'm wanting, you cannot have what you want but you may experience what you have. So what do I have in that moment if I'm wanting? I have lack and limitation and scarcity. But if I am in that moment choosing but not wanting, if I am in that moment present to the presence, present to the ever flowing abundance, the wellspring of abundance that is all around in every aspect of our lives, there are miracles happening all over the planet right now. If you just take a deeper look, there is an abundance of air Breathing in that beautiful, beautiful prana. There is an abundance of trees. 
There is an abundance of ocean. There is an abundance of spiders. I had one bite me a second ago. There's an abundance of hair in my, uh, growing off of my face. Most of you have a refrigerator, a house, people who love you, clothes on your back. If you want to go to the movies, if you want to do something fun, you can do it. There is an abundance of knowledge. There's this thing called the internet, which we're talking on, where they have this thing called YouTube, where you can just learn freaking anything. You don't have to drive to a library. The knowledge is not stored somewhere else, or I'll say information, because knowledge is uh, information applied. It is understanding, it is embodiment, but you know what I mean. This is the thing we all get to step into and remember and challenge. We get to question the idea that some people have to lose in, for, in order for us to win. We get to question the scarcity mentality and mindset that we have around money and business and all of the conversations that have come up for you about who you are within that context, within the idea of business, within the idea of how does that operate? What would it look like if I were to operate differently within my business? I experience a lot of abundance. I think that a part of it is I don't need it anymore. There was a point when I was proving, I needed to prove to my family that I was good enough, that I wasn't the quote unquote black sheep. And so I needed to prove that I could make money and I could help them and I could support them. And when I was doing that, it didn't feel good. I was playing musical chairs at that point. But when I took that away, when I took a deeper look at it and really stepped in, and started to notice, just really notice the miracles that were happening all day, every day, all around me and as me and through me. I shifted my perception and my perception shifted everything around me. We are vibrational beings and within those vibrations, we are attracting and repelling things. And so this is called the law of magnetism or the law of attraction, if you may. And it has shifted how I operate in business. People will tell you, anybody who works for me will tell you, I, I, my motto is, is that you treat everybody, whether they're email or they're commenting or whatever, like you would treat your grandmother, you know? Like that's what we're here, you know, when you, when you talk to your granny, granny, yes, granny, I hear you. That type of love, that type of reverence, that type of respect is how we roll in my company. And I would cuss my grandmother out if she was, <laughs> if she was, uh, you know, doing some crazy shit, but that's all another ball game. Blessings and blessings. Let me know in the comments if this resonated with you, if this jumped off the page, what's landing for you, what's alive for you, just listening to this. What, what's the money story that you grew up with? Did you play musical chairs? Just comment, comment, comment. I love you guys, blessings and blessings. Please share this message if it supported you in any way. I love you all. Peace from Byron Bay, Australia. Ooh, ooh.